Foles was this close to being an eagle? Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Thing back here, and I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys actually had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I was extremely busy, had a lot of family things going on, but that's all behind me now. And you know what? The Eagles aren't slowing down. They aren't slowing down because the reports we're getting today about Nick Foles tells me one thing about the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles aren't done yet. The Eagles, they're, they're still looking to improve this team. Now, they may not have a big splash left in them, but they're definitely going to make some depth moves at the least. But Nick Foles almost came back to Philly. We're going to talk about it in a second. But before we do, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like Make sure you subscribe for Eagles daily content, NFL football content, all that kind of stuff. And if you've been subscribed for a while, just double check. Double moonwalk check. Make sure you're still subscribed. And one of the things that I will be doing this week is we'll be doing a channel membership call-in like we did before the draft. We will also be doing some live streams um, in the afternoon, or early morning, afternoon for some of you guys this week, uh, at least a few days. Uh, we should be doing that, so look for that as well. Now, let's jump right into it, okay? Nick Foles today agreed to terms with the Indianapolis Colts. He's going to go play for the Colts. And that, in its own right, is kind of funny, right? Uh, Jim Ursay could not wait to get uh, Carson Wentz out of Indianapolis. He couldn't wait. So what does he do? He gets, he gets Nick Foles and brings him in this year. I think... That's another slap in the face for Carson Wentz. But it makes a lot of sense. Frank Reich has had success with Nick Foles. He knows how to use Nick Foles the right way. I mean, they went, went, went and won a Super Bowl. So, you know, I think it's a good move for the Indianapolis Colts. I think it's a good, new, a good move uh, for Nick Foles. And, and, you know, hey, what are you going to do? But the interesting part of this whole story about Nick Foles going to the Colts is the Eagles were in play. The Eagles were in play for Nick Foles. They were interested in Nick Foles. Uh, according to Jeremy Fowler, he says the Eagles were involved in Nick Foles' free agency for a potential reunion of Super Bowl winners before Foles signed his two-year deal with the Colts per source. He then goes on to say, and add this, as Eagles got, as Eagles got trade interest on Gardner Minshew, they discussed Nick Foles, but ultimately decided they would stick with their quarterback room, including Minshew and a draft pick, Carson Strong. So th this is fascinating. And, and um, you know, I, I got to tell you, I'm very, very surprised that the Eagles would go this route. Okay, hear me out, uh, because here's how I see it. Nick Foles is a legend in Philadelphia. He carries a big stick, you know what I'm saying? He, he He's on his tiptoes when he goes to the bathroom. He carries a big stick in Philly. And to bring him back, in my opinion, uh, from a fan perspective, right, and, and from looking at our fan base, I think, <laughs> I think you start such a quarterback controversy, okay? Maybe not at first, maybe not going into the season, but what if Jalen Hurts goes out there and he has one bad half, one bad game, two bad games? Uh, you know what's going to happen. Half the fan base, Nick Foles fans, are going to call for Nick Foles to come in. Put Nick Foles in, put the Super Bowl champion in, he will go and turn his team around. That's what's going to happen. And from the fan base perspective, they're going to be, they're, it's going to be back and forth, back and forth. From the football team perspective, I'm sure it doesn't bother Jalen Hurts. I'm sure he mentally can handle it. I'm sure he would be fine. Um, I'm sure Nick Foles wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go to Nick Sirianni and say, let me start like Minshew. He's not going to do that. But from a fan base perspective, like my perspective of doing these videos and, and talking with you guys, it will be right down the middle. Bench hurts, put Foles in. Bench hurts, put Foles in. Why? Because Nick Foles is a Super Bowl champion. There are a lot of people that thought we should never have gotten rid of Nick Foles to begin with. The Folesian society runs strong. So 
the Eagles, if they would have done it, it really would have shocked me. Like, I would have been absolutely shocked. Because, uh, and they almost did it. They almost did it. Because I just think, I think it puts, me personally, my and my, this is just my opinion. Okay, I just think it puts unneeded stress and pressure on Jalen Hurts. And that's not to say Hurts can't handle it. He doesn't welcome it. He doesn't want it. But it just does anyways because you're talking about Nick Foles. You're talking about Nick Foles. As soon as Hurts has a bad half, as soon as there's a bad game, the fans are going to want Nick Foles, a lot of them. So I, I think it would have just put a lot more stress on on Jalen Hurts. Whether he liked it, whether he didn't, whether he could handle it, it's just, it just would have. Uh, but it would have been, I mean, it would have been fascinating. It would have been fascinating watch. Must see TV, you know? And, and just to think that Nick Foles back in Eagles gear, the ovation he gets and he deserves, I, I would like all that parts of it. But it, it does, it, it, you know, I gotta think. And here's the other thing I'm thinking about. And, and I could be wrong about this. But, the Eagles got to know what kind, uh, what kind of pressure Nick Foles brings by just coming back. He's a legend in Philly. So if he came back to the Eagles, does, does, that, does that give us a hint that the Eagles don't have a long leash on Jalen Hurts? Would they really be willing to put that pressure, unneeded pressure, on Jalen Hurts? Is that, is that tell us something? I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's 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 very surprising to me that that they really if if they would have done it. I talking about it, uh, inquiring about it, talking to Nick Foles about maybe what he wants, doing all that kind of stuff is not the same thing as pulling the trigger and signing him. He didn't sign, so at the end of the day, I guess it I, I, I guess it is what it is. They have every right to talk about every possible scenario with every possible player. I mean that's what that's what they're supposed to do, right? That's what good GMs are supposed to do. And now I'm, I'm supposed to say that Howie Roseman's the greatest GM in the history of GMs. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, he I, I'll I'll say this about about Howie Roseman. There's been reports that Howie Roseman, um, after they fired Doug, Jeffrey Lurie took a back seat, and now the last two years has been Howie's show. Well, if that's the case. Then, 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 then Jeffrey Lurie needs to come out and apologize to Howie Roseman for all those years how he had to take the blame. You know what I'm saying? But if it's working, it's working. If that's the case, if those rumors are true, then thank God, you know, Jeffrey Lurie took 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 a back seat. And I think how he's done a superb job this all season. I don't think he's done yet. I'm just I'm just going to be telling you the truth. I don't think he's done yet. I don't think it's going to be a big splash. I don't expect like Jesse Bates or Chuck Clark. But I do think you're going to get depth signings. I think you could get another running back. I wouldn't be surprised if you get a, a, a you know, another defensive end or, or somebody on that defensive line. Uh, Jadavian Clowney just signed with the Browns yesterday. Um, I, I didn't think I, I, I mentioned him, but I didn't think he was. Sorry, I banged it to the camera. I didn't think he was likely. But um, Howie, Howie has done a great job. So I want everybody to know Howie Roseman to me, has been fantastic. I have no complaints about him, really, the last two years. So, one more good, one more good draft. One more. And you know what? I'm going to do an apology video dedicated to Howie Roseman, and it'll be at least 10 minutes long. So, we'll see where it turns out. We'll see. Let's see how the season goes first. We, we, we gotta, we gotta go out and win. There's been too many times where we thought, we were going to be good. We were going to be great. And then we get in there and things happen, you know? And, and and that can happen again. Look, when I look at the Eagles right now, I say this is the best team. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just saw Denzel Washington. That's me. I always think I always look like Denzel Washington, you know? See that pinky up? You got this cat. You hear the cat meowing? She wants to go back into the room with her kitties. She comes out like every five minutes. Goes in, comes out, goes in, comes out. Pause. But, anyways, so, what the hell was I saying? So, yeah, the Eagles, we've seen the Eagles have great off-seasons before, get excited about the season, come in, and then something happens. Could be injury. It could be a lot of things. So, we have to wait and see. But, by the way everything looks, the Eagles are the best team in the division. My expectations at this point right now for this team is win the division, get a home playoff game, and win it. That's my, that's my floor right now. 
That's what I expect. If I don't get that, I think it's a disappointing season, barring injury, right? Because injuries happen. You're going to have injuries happen. And if you get killed by injuries, I can't kill Howie. I can't kill the team. Um, but I do think it's interesting that Peter King, he has the Eagles ranked top 10 in the NFL. Are the Eagles, and I'll ask you, are they a top 10 team right now? That's a It's a very interesting question. Um, I... I, I have to really think about it because I think the majority of the top teams are in the AFC. I really do, especially the AFC West. The AFC West is absolutely loaded, okay? Um, but I think when you look at, at the, the conference, right, I, I think it's fair. And this, there's no order here except for we'll put the Rams one because they won the Super Bowl. Rams would be one, Buccaneers, Green Bay. Um, and, then, and then after that, after those three teams, I, I mean, I think you get teams like San Francisco and Philly. I do. I think you get those those teams. So I think the Eagles are maybe a top five team in the conference. Are they a top ten team in the NFL? Perhaps. Perhaps. But as you guys know, the, to me, the two most important people for this team are going to be Jonathan Gannon and Jalen Hurts. They've got to go out and play. But I don't think the Eagles are done yet. I expect moves, maybe not big moves, to come through. But after the fact that they are still trying to upgrade a position, and it was quarterback, um, I, I, I don't think this team is done. And, and the other thing we need to talk about, what would they have done with Minshew? I guess they would have traded Gardner Minshew. Uh, you, you didn't bring him full, so there's no way you trade Gardner Minshew now. Minshew's making like 900000 You let him play, then you let him walk, and you hope Carson Strong could be your number two after this, uh, after this season. But, man, Nick Foles, almost the eagle. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I will be back. I'll have few videos tomorrow as well as probably maybe a live stream if possible. And uh, I'm going to go get ready because in a few hours it's time for Better Call Saul. With that, with that said, <coughs> I'm choking myself. With that said, take care. Talk to you later, of course. Don't be a dingbat. And don't forget, it's Howie Vision. We're all just living in it. You know, I thought it was also kind of interesting that in Peter King's ranking, he had the Cowboys at 15. The Cowboys at 15, which is, it's about where I would have put them. I think they've taken quite a few steps back this all season. I think they're a middle of the road team. I have them about eight, nine wins. So I think that's, that's a perfect ranking. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to keep saying this, it's on paper. We got to go out and we got to perform now. We got to go play. But you look at Dallas's first two games, right? They got they got Tampa Bay and the Bengals. That's 0-2 right there, baby. That's 0-2 right there. Tell Mark Holmes, tell Michael Anthony, where's the fitness? Uh, Cowboys are starting 0-2. The Birds are starting 2-0. With that said, there's a Washington. 